And the top cop who put his badge on the line for justice. The gripping story of Deputy Sheriff Doug Papa. He was a top cop who did the right thing and paid dearly for it. You know the name Doug Papa? Yes, I do. God bless Doug Papa. An honest cop. He was a man of integrity. His testimony last summer freed an innocent man from jail who had already been convicted of shooting his ex-wife. But Papa's going public cost him his job as an undercover cop. I was elated, of course. But then as he testified, I was, I was somewhat concerned for him because I knew that they were probably going to crucify that man. Doug Papa was targeted for a 10-day suspension by his own department for defying superiors and talking to the media. This Brooklyn-born street fighter wouldn't back down. Sometimes the truth has a price. That may be the lesson of a Virginia police officer who says... In trying to do the right thing, he ended up paying for it. The message just sending is, see, we did it, Doug. You don't come out and you don't buck the system. Uh, no matter what the reason is, you just can basically keep your mouth shut. But if I wouldn't do it all over again, I would take the badge and I would leave it on somebody's desk and get out of place work. Because the day I can tell the truth because somebody's pressuring me, and the day the system doesn't want me to tell the truth because somebody's pressuring me, is the day I leave the badge on the desk and walk away. Papa was fired for insubordination. The one man who confronted truth and consequences. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Doug Papa podcast from Las Vegas, Nevada. This is episode 150 for June 28th, 2023. Listen, folks, you're all familiar with the... Uh, alleged UFO sighting, alien sighting that I've been working on for uh, like two weeks. Um, I want to say something and straighten, straighten something out here. In episode 148, um, I misquoted Angel as saying the cameras don't record when the police officer came up to him and asked, do you have any cameras? Um, actually, what he said was, and this is what happens when you watch videos over and over and over and trying to look at stuff in the videos. You, you mis misquote people and when you're tired. Anyway, I said in 148 um, that when the police officer said, do you have any surveillance cameras? He said, uh, I said, he, the cameras don't record. And some of the people who follow me uh, corrected me. And I went back and I looked at it. And, uh, and what actually Angel said on 148 was the cameras don't belong to us. And that was at uh, the one... Point three five point three four mark in episode uh, one forty eight. So uh, that's vital because those landlords' cameras, like I've been talking about it, and the one in the backyard. We'll talk about more of that here today. Um, is vital. So thanks to my uh, followers for pointing that out. And here is a, a short clip. It'll it'll loop off and on, but you can hear what he says when the police officer asks them, and he does say it's uh, the cameras don't record. No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. No okay, so you can no hear video. very distinctively uh, the, cameras the cameras don't belong no to us. And when no I was listening to and I was tired, I thought he said uh, the no cameras don't no record. Video. So uh, it doesn't change no anything no um, because no those back cameras no are still no uh, no vital. I'm getting an echo here. Let me turn this thing down here for a minute. No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. Why is that still No surveillance, no video. The cameras don't belong to us. No surveillance, no video. Okay. That was that. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Yesterday, you all know, in episode 149... I uh, broke the story. There was no audio on it, and I put in there no audio. It's a slide presentation. People kept asking me, where's the audio? Where's the audio? But uh, you got to listen, and you got to look at these uh, the about section, the description section in these episodes when I do them. Anyway, I broke the story uh, around the, about the affair between uh, Sheriff Kevin McMahill and Assistant Sheriff Sasha Larkin, and uh, I said sources said that uh, confirmed that to me, and uh, he was thrown out of his house by his wife. Uh, uh, about a few weeks ago uh, because she found incriminating text messages on his Signal account on his phone that corroborated uh, the affair between uh, Assistant Sheriff Sasha Larkin, who we appointed, 
and himself. And you have to remember, folks, as the sheriff of Clark County, he runs the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. People keep asking me this question. Well, we do not have a commissioner or a police chief. The elected sheriff, even though we don't have a Clark County Sheriff's Department anymore, was merged with the police department in 1973 when they formed the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. As such, he is the highest ranking law enforcement officer in Southern Nevada and command of the LVMPD. All employees, folks, under him, they're subordinate to him because he is the sheriff. So we'll have more on that down the road, but you can look at that on the slide presentation that I put on on 149. I think I adjusted the noise limiter, so if the air conditioning comes on, uh, hopefully it'll it'll drown it'll it'll drown it out. But you turn up the noise limiter too much, it starts distorting the voice. So we're gonna have to live with it because I just can't have that air conditioning off. It gets about 105 degrees in here, and it's it's very uncomfortable. Okay, so we got uh, the angels straightened out over there, ladies and gentlemen. I read a press release. Um, that I sent out on Saturday, June 24th, uh, over the weekend. And let me get up on the screen. I don't know when I blow this up if the writing is going to come out fine, but let me get it up on the screen here and zoom in. And then um, get my glasses on and let me read this for you if you can't see it. Here. Okay, I sent this out Saturday, June 24th to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Public Information Office. And I said, KLAS TV 8 News Now reported in a June 15, 2023 news broadcast that, quote, police do not believe that this was a hoax call, unquote. According to the Communication Bureau record, the first person. Angel, on the phone with the dispatcher on May 1st, 2023, stated that he saw something fall from the sky and land in his yard and saw alien creatures. The father, a Bobby, then went on the line with the dispatcher and stated he also saw the creatures. Based on the statement made by the 8 News Now reporter, what led the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, the LVMPD, to believe that what the callers reported was not a hoax. If this was not a hoax, what evidence does the LVMPD possess that confirms what the callers stated was in fact true, in whole, or in part? On May 27, 2023, in an on-the-record recorded interview with me, Angel stated that he was informed by an LVMPD detective that contact was made with the landlord and the police viewed the landlord's video surveillance camera footage from the rear yard from April 30th to May 1st, 2023. Did the LVMPD view this video footage, yes or no? If yes, was the landlord's dedicated digital video recorder and or computer or hard drive seized by the LVMPD that contained video footage from the time frame previously listed? If the hardware was not seized, was the recorded video on the landlord's recording device downloaded to digital media by any member of the LVMPD, and if so, is the LVMPD currently in possession of said video recording evidence, and or was it turned over to another agency? Did any member of the LVMPD scrub, delete, alter, change, or in any manner whatsoever tamper with any digital evidence that was in the possession of the LVMPD to include Communications Bureau records, police reports, and or officer body-worn camera footage related to this event? Did the LVMPD assist or cooperate with any federal agency in relation to this event? And if so, can you identify the agency slash agencies, excuse me, agencies involved? Angel stated during the recorded interview with me, quote, the owner, he, they, showed the footage to the cops, and the cops said that probably 11.50 something, a couple of minutes before it happened, the floor was perfect, like the dirt was plain normal, like there was no circle or nothing, and around, and then it cut off the camera, and at maybe 12.03, 12.05, I don't know, a couple of minutes after, the print was there, the circle. And the cameras, there's nothing on it. 
like no lights or nothing. Did a police detective inform Angel of what the police observed on the video footage? Simple question, yes or no. Can you explain why two Northwest Area Command Sergeants went to the residence and spoke with the family on or about May 6th, being the original call was cleared on May 1st as, quote, unable to locate, unquote. Were the sergeant's body-worn cameras operating through the t during the time they were on the property, and if not, why? Why did two detectives, one male and one female, according to the family, arrive at their home days after May 1st and interview them? What was the nature of the investigation? Can you explain why? I already said that one. Have you been? I have been told that the verbal statement the LVMPD gave to various local and national news media last week about why the LVMPD video surveillance system installed at the family's home by the Homeland Security Division and monitored at the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center was bogus and had nothing to do with the safety of the family. What was the true reason why the cameras were installed on the family's private property? Now that the LVMPD has publicly admitted that police video surveillance systems are indeed installed on citizens' private homes, albeit once the LVMPD determines that a, excuse me, a citizen may be harassed or harmed, what contact number should a citizen call to request an LVMPD video camera install at their home should they be in fear of harassment or harm? The alleged Las Vegas UFO incident has attracted national and international interest. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department has an obligation to respond to this Meade request in a timely manner. Thank you, Doug Papa, independent investigative journalist, host of the Baltimore Pulse Examiner. Please respond at your earliest convenience to this email address or blah, 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 blah. Okay, folks, let me get that back on. Let me get back up on the screen here. Okay. Let me get that off. Hopefully you, you could read it. If you couldn't read it, um, well, you heard me. Uh, I, I said what was in there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, remember on these past cop interviews that I did, um, you heard me say what Angel told me in the interview on May 27th. You heard his recording uh, his of the interview on episode 145 that I published on May 27th. You heard what he told me uh, on that interview that I did on May 19th when you went up to the house. So just keep that in mind. Um, I want to play number 10. We're we'll crossing off some stuff here, so what we already talked about here. Okay. On June 8th, um, and this has been in the media, uh, on social media, and I have to investigate everything myself, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I can't take anybody's word what's out there. There were things out there about uh, him being on a documentary, different type of stuff. Uh, I tracked a lot of stuff down the past couple of days, and that's the, the essence of what this uh, podcast here is going to be about. So he, Angel has a, uh, a TikTok account. Um, I believe it's Las Vegas underscore UFO. Um, let me put that over there. Um, let's hold that thought for a second. When I asked about the video cameras, and the other day I said to the media, I said you should get the video camera footage uh, from the sergeant's body cam and some other stuff, and then the video camera footage that uh, w would have been recorded at, at the home. And when I do these things, a lot of times I talk because I have experience in, in surveillance and stuff like that. And I think when I'm talking that everybody knows what I'm talking about. And I just want to be clear that uh, most likely um, the digital video recorders uh, at the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center, and I'm basing this on um, what I was told some time ago, and when I was director of security and surveillance, we had switched over from the, the VCRs, you know, the VCR tapes, and we spent a lot of money, over a million dollars, and we put in the digital video recording system. Now, when those are recording the cameras, 
uh, we had an overwrite uh, because of gaming regulations uh, seven days. So I just want to explain this. It's, it's going to be very simple. In other words, the, you can program the digital video recorders on when you want it to overwrite. So you don't have to go back and, and erase anything in the, uh, in the hard drive. That's what it records on. They record on hard drives inside the DVRs, digital video recorders. So ours was set to seven days. Now, after seven days, whatever's in the hard drive would automatically overwrite, be deleted, and be erased. So what, we, what you do is, if we have an event like a trip and fall, uh, a fight, um, anything that would possibly get us into civil litigation uh, down the road, the surveillance operators, according to our policy, they would take capture that event and on and then download it onto DVDs, and then um, the DVDs would be stored. So once that seven days was over, if somebody had fallen, a trip and fall, and you get a thing from an attorney saying they're going to file a lawsuit, uh, we have everything burned. So any type of event, whether it was a fight, a uh, trip and fall, anything that could get us into civil litigation. What was seen on those cameras, recorded on the DVRs, would would have been immediately downloaded onto a, a DVD, and then it's there for you know posterity. Um, now, uh, I heard some time ago uh, that the with this the cameras that are monitored at the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center, and we talked about that in the last podcast. I'm not going to rehash it. You go back and listen to the podcast when I did all this about uh, the, the Counterterrorism Center and the cameras. Uh, I believe they, they overwrite every 14 days, okay? Um, that's what I was told some time ago. Whether that's true or not, it, that's not what, what is important, okay? If they downloaded anything that happened at that house that they thought they wanted, like I said, there was a possibility, maybe there were foreign agents coming up to the house, an event happened, whatever, they would have downloaded the operators onto DVDs. So when I said the media needs to get the footage, um, if they didn't download anything on the DVD because nothing happened, then there wouldn't be any footage. But if they did, it would be stored on uh, the DVDs from the hard drive of the digital video recorders. I just, you know, I just wanted to get that out because uh, sometimes somebody brought something up to me the other day on that. And you know, when I talk about these things, I think people know the things that I know, uh, and, and most people don't. So, so we squared that away. So the video cameras uh, at the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center. Uh, just like everywhere else now, nobody uses VHS tapes anymore. They're recorded on digital video recorders, and if something happened or something they were doing with an investigation, they most likely would have downloaded those onto uh, the footage onto a DVD. So I just want to uh, bring that out. Um, I got that here in my notes. Now, what I said was, let's put this over here, Angel uh, opened a TikTok account. Um, I think it was around the, the 8th, the 8th, okay? And remember, I did my interview with them, the recorded interview on May 27th. So uh, it's Las Vegas underscore UFO, and he has a couple of things up there. I'm not going to pull the screenshot up because I, it'll, matter of fact, I don't even have it in input. But uh, what I do have is this, um, and I'll get it up on the screen for you. Okay, let me get rid of my title there. So I'm going to go full blast on this. Okay. This is from his June 8th TikTok account. And you see where he says, give me 1,000 followers so I can do live questions and answer. This is not a joke. And he's sitting in the circle uh, that I saw um, at the home and that we now know because of the surveillance footage uh, from the GPS satellite on Google Earth that that circle was at least there from December 20th, I believe. I said that in the other podcast, December 20th of 2022. And that's where he says that supposedly this thing came down in that area. We now know, I'm comfortable with, other people say, I get all these emails, you're crazy, it could have been this, that. Okay, do your own investigation. And I said that in the other podcast. The ring camera at the home that I talked about, um, to me, that's out the door. Like I said, no relevance to the May 1st incident. The circle that he claims was where something may have come down. Uh, it's just not possible. That that circle was obviously there since December 20th of 2022, according to the Google Earth GPS satellites. I know people say, well, maybe the, the government went in, they did that, you know, that that's a far stretch of the imagination. So if that's what you want to believe, believe. But that circle was there, has nothing to do 
in my opinion, with anything that happened with this family on May 1st, 2023. So um, that's his TikTok. We get that off over here. Some of the stuff I'm going to talk about here is, is disturbing to me because it's, uh, and I'll tell you why after I, I do it. Okay, then on that one we just saw was on June 8th. On June 10th, he put this up on his TikTok. I'm going to blow it up for you. Okay, and uh, let me read that there, what he says there. Um, he says, I'm fine, I'm sorry, I've been very busy and cannot do the part two, but I promise part two is coming soon. I have exciting news. Netflix and Discovery Channel wants to hire me to do a uh, documentary. Now, uh, that the part two, what he's talking about, is important because uh, I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, but according to Angel, um, and he did an interview that you're going to see some clips on May excuse me, on June 10th with the Canadian pot UFO podcaster. And um, I'll get to that in a second. So you can go back and review this guy's, it's like over an hour. Um, but also in that podcast interview, he says a lot of stuff that's freaking bizarre. And a lot of it contradicts some of the stuff that he told me. I'll get to that in a second. But the part two here he's talking about in that podcast interview that he did with the Canadian guy, um, he says there that, in a couple of days, he's going to release, you can go back and watch it, um, he's going to release part two, and part two supposedly has video or photographs of these aliens or beings. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, he has not um, issued a part two, and you'll see here in a second, okay? Um, anyway, the June 10th uh, podcast that he was on, it's from Canada, and it's, uh, it's one of those UFO, you know, people that follow UFOs, and it's called, Are They Really Here? Are They Really Here? You can go on YouTube and find that channel, and you will see Angels, the full interview with them. I have some excerpts from that that I'm playing here. But again, it's, Are They Really Here? on YouTube. And um, so, bear with me for a second. We got the June 10th. Just want to make sure you're not missing anything. That sometimes I do all these inputs. I I do the podcast, and when it's over, I say, "Wow, I forgot to talk about that one." So I got all my notes going down chronologically here. Okay, I want you to listen to this. Let me get rid of that thing over here. Okay, this is um, the interview, a section of the interview, a segment of the interview that he did with this podcaster on. Uh, I believe this was on June. 10th is and he did another one the following day he did a small one questions and answer stuff with uh with some people but i want you to listen to this and what, what's your theory on what these things are like yeah you mentioned they they seem a little demonic but what what, what do you do you think they're from outer space where do you think they're coming from i don't know to be honest you know we're we're christians so we what well, well, we believe it might be a might be a ufo maybe not because i never saw the object you know like the Let's say the disc, but I just saw the circle. That's the thing. So it might be a, might be a, might be a UFO. But well, what I'm thinking might be like a fallen angel because it's not like a demonic figure. So. Yeah. And what, what's your theory on what these things are like? Yeah, you mentioned they they seem a little demonic, but what 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 do you do you think they're from outer space? Where do you think they're coming from? I don't know to be honest. You know, we're we're Christians, so we what well, what well, we believe it might be a might be a UFO, might be not because I never saw the object. You know, like the Let's take the disc, but I just saw the circle. That's the thing. So it might be a, might be a, might be a UFO. But well, what I'm thinking might be like a fallen angel because I saw like a demonic figure. So. Yeah. And what's your theory on what these? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Now, watch his full interview on that podcast I just mentioned. Are they really here? Okay, because that is contradictory to what he told me. He said it was a UFO. He never mentioned anything that he thought it might have been a fallen angel. Um, remember, I had the discussion with them in the last podcast. I talked about that. Uh, he said that about the demons and stuff, and I'll get to that here in a second. So um, that's very troubling to me because now he's saying it may not have been a UFO. It may have been a fallen angel, okay? Um, and uh, the credibility here is going quickly down the toilet. 
Now, this is another short clip when he's he's answering questions, and this happened on June 11th, the next day, with the same person, but he's taking questions, from, I guess, from a chat room, and um, it's just a couple seconds, and listen to what he's saying, because he's saying more things now that he, he didn't um, talk to me about, about what these things were and, and the description, so listen up on this one. Oh, the teeth, they had it. They had a lot of teeth, like the one I saw had a lot of teeth and they're like canine teeth. Pointy teeth, yes, kind of, yeah, pointy teeth, all of them. Their hand, um, yeah. How many fingers, did you, like five fingers or three, like how long was it? Could you describe that for us? They look like, like, they look like, like normal hands, but they look like, like big. Um, their fingers were like, how can I say this? They were skinny fingers though, I don't know, they're weird. And long? They're long, yeah, they're long. Do they look mean? Yes, they look very terrifying. It was definitely demonic, yes. Yes, they are demonic. Because I know in the Bible says that the aliens are, you know, demons. All oh, the teeth, they had they had a lot of teeth, like the one I saw okay, had a lot of teeth the gentleman, and they're like uh, canine teeth. So we have over there, so now we have uh, teeth, like canine teeth. He saw their hands, long, thin, you heard what he said. He now believes they're demonic. Um, this is all new stuff to me that he's never told me. But like I said on the other podcast, when he was talking about the eyebrows moving and blinking, I don't know. We already saw that video that he posted with the family out in the yard. It's only a couple of seconds when they're back there. So I don't know how he can see the way that the light was dim in that yard, that now he's seeing hands. He saw the canine teeth um, and, and whatever else, else he said in there. Uh, it, to me, as an investigator, I believe he's, you know, people are asking him questions, and he's now saying stuff that I believe uh, is not true. I, don't, I wasn't in the yard, but uh, like I said, it's uh, it's it's going to get a little it's going to get a little worse here as we go along. The air condition is running. I'm just saying that because I don't know if it's coming over the production. I won't know till the uh, the production is stopped. But hopefully, it's not that much uh, disturbing to you. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this because this is a, a big part of, of this thing with me. Remember on episode 144, I played the, uh, the audio interview. It didn't come out right, and then I put it on 145, and it was clear. That was the recorded telephonic interview I had with him on the record interview on May 27th, and I played that. This is a small clip, and I want you to listen to this, listen to this portion uh, right here. But I did notice another camera that was lower on the pole that I couldn't see when I was out there on Friday, May 19th, uh, and it's facing the rear yard. Angel, tell me what that camera is and, and who put that one there. Okay, the camera that was on the property already? Right. It's, uh, what, it's the owner. So the owner has a lot of stuff in the back, like motorhomes and trailers. So, you know, he has to protect his own stuff. And, he, oh, and is that recorded? That's recorded? Yes. Okay. Tell me, tell me what you found out about what was recorded on that, ca on that camera. Tell me what you told me this afternoon as, as how you know it. You know what we're talking about. I t you told me this afternoon in the backyard and your father what happened with that camera. Tell, me, tell the people what was going on with that. Okay, so the, um, the, the owner, he showed, he, they showed the, the footage to the cops. And the cops said that at uh, probably 11:50 something, a couple minutes before that happened, the the floor was perfect. Like the the like the dirt was plain normal. Like there was no circle or nothing. And around, and then it cut off the camera. And then I let 12 or maybe 12:03, 12:05. I don't know. A couple minutes after, the the print was there. The circle. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's, uh, let me get that off the screen there. So basically, that's to refresh your memory. Remember, he said that uh, the police told him, they went out, they reviewed the video footage from the owner, and it recorded um, before midnight, the ground's okay, a couple of minutes, something goes wrong with the camera, the camera comes back on, the recording, he says, and a couple of minutes after midnight, the circle is in the ground, 
and he said that the police told him that they reviewed this. And then you heard my response to in, in that media quest to Metro to ask them, because I said that in the other podcast. Um, it's a very simple question from Metro. They need to come out and tell us, did indeed they review that landlord's footage, and is what Angel told me true? Because I said on the last podcast, we know, ladies and gentlemen, that the circle was there already. So I said that was a major credibility factor with me in that last podcast. That circle was there all the time. We know it's there from December 20th of 2022. But I just wanted to refresh your memory with that recording. Now I want you to listen to this recording. This is, now he's taking questions, June 11th again, and he's sitting in the circle in his yard while he's doing this on a table like you saw on the TikTok thing. He took a photograph of it. I want you to listen to, to this. Any security cameras? Yeah, but it did it capture, uh, it was motion sensor and it, it did not go off. Any security cameras? Yeah, but it did it capture, uh, it was motion sensor and it, it did not go off. Any security cameras? Yeah, but it did it capture, uh, it was motion sensor and it, it did not go off. Any security cameras? Yeah, but it did it capture, uh, it was motion sensor and... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is, uh, as far as I'm concerned as an investigator, that is a total contradiction to what he told me uh, in the interview uh, that you heard the recording on. Go back on 145 and listen. Now he's saying that uh, it was a motion camera and it didn't record anything. It didn't come on. That is a total contradiction to what he told me uh, in that, that interview. And um, it's, it's, it's more than troubling because, uh, and another thing, when he, see, he doesn't know what he's talking about because a motion camera would come on and record. And he said it was a motion camera, it didn't record. So, you heard the person, any surveillance cameras. So, what he told me in that interview with me on May 27th, and what he said on June 11th, you just heard him, you can go back and play this later, uh, to me is a major uh, a contradiction. And, uh, you know, it's, um, this, this, this kid's credibility with me is shot, ladies and gentlemen, okay? There's still things that, I, I still have another aspect of this I'm still investigating, and I'm still looking into this, but I'm going to tell you right now that uh, Angel's credibility with me, credibility with me um, is, uh, is down the freaking tubes, okay? And go back and listen, and I'm going to talk about some more stuff here in a second. So now we have the surveillance camera didn't record, because he said it was a motion, it didn't record, and actually if it was a motion camera, it would have recorded it would have recorded something coming down. Whether it recorded on the video, we wouldn't know, but it would, that would set the camera off, or the call an alarm thing, to go into the recorder and set, and he said, listen, your friend, it didn't record, it was, there's no recording. 100% uh, uh, the opposite of what you heard him tell me, that the cops looked at it and told them this is what they saw. So um, that it is what it is uh, on that one. So I want to play this now. Okay, this is, he recorded this, it's on his TikTok, um, I think it's on June 12th, okay, and he put this on his TikTok, it's still out there, um, Las Vegas underscore UFO, you can go back and look at it, look at it, but let me play it for you, it's only like a minute, and this is what he put out. Okay, we're not playing here for some reason. Hang on one second. It's not in the input, but I gotta get it in here because this is important, so hold on one second. Okay, it's now in. So let me play this and listen to this. Today's uh, June 12th. I'm outside my house with my family. Um, you can see people are saying that we disappeared, the news stations. You know, what I learned these couple of days that everything on TV is fake. 
and especially the news channels, they'll say fake stuff and it's not true. You know, I already said what I had to say. If you want to believe it, believe it. I don't care no more. I just want to, you guys understand because of you guys I have depression, I have anxiety attacks and I just want to, I just want to be normal again. I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel okay guys. And um, just move on guys. Forget about it and just, bye. Okay, folks, so you heard him. Uh, this was an international in incident, uh, like I said, not just here in the United States, and now he wants everybody to just forget about it. Um, um, Angel's credibility with me is gone, okay? There's nothing he can say that would make me believe now he told the truth on anything. The only problem I have with this is what's not a hoax, ladies and gentlemen, is something was falling from the sky that NASA and the meteor the meteor society said was most likely a say most likely a comet. Okay, um, but obviously nothing came down in that family's yard. I talked about it in the other podcast. That circle was already there. Um, we have this mystery right now that the police aren't saying anything. They need to come out and tell us that. Either they do or they do not went out, have the footage, or if they went to the house and didn't see anything, they need to come out and make a statement because um, Angel's story just doesn't jive with them anymore. There's too many contradictions. So, um, you know, and it, it gets worse, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to play this guy's podcast because it's his own podcast, but go to Are They Really Here on YouTube and listen to Angel's entire interview with this guy. He's all over the place. He's putting stuff in that's extremely bizarre. He's talking about uh, the next morning, he opened his closet or something, clothes are moving back and forth. They need to go look at him, just taking that out of context. Um, he talks about, uh, and he shows the etchings that I talk about, those chalk marks that were in the ground. He talks about that with the guy. Um, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing because you go back and look at it. Uh, remember I said uh, that he called when I was on the phone with him uh, last week would have been, uh, that he said, I want to let you know about this woman two or three months came up. The black lady said that aliens or demons would come to Vegas and do something. Um, well, he talks about that in that podcast. And you go back and look at this podcast that he was on. But he says in there, when he's talking about this woman that came up to him, uh, he says uh, she told them they were demons and that um, they were going to come down to Las Vegas and eat Las Vegas eat the people in Las Vegas, or you go back and look at it. So this whole scenario is um, is is beyond, to me, the realm of of, uh, of common sense. It's, it's, a, it's a disgrace right now. He also said in that podcast, you go back and look at it, this, are you, are they really here? Um, the the guy interviewing him says, you know, what have, have you seen government people like men in black? And then he does say, like he told me, he saw a 2008 um truck uh again when he said to me 2010 that kind of bothered me because the, the government's it's 2023 they're driving 13 year old vehicles still who knows maybe they can't afford vehicles but he says 2008 in that guy's podcast and then he says uh he goes more into what he didn't tell me he said let me go back and look at my podcast when he says the truck came by tried to run up after the truck and the um and ran down the street and and you know couldn't catch it but in this podcast, he says um, there were three people inside. They were bald. They had white shirts and black ties. I think he says jackets. And um, go back and listen to it. It's like now he's seeing more than what he what he told me. Um, and then he says also in that uh, podcast, um, the one from Canada. Again, he says um, I'm coming out with part two. Go listen to what he says. And he says something to the effect that part two is the video of photos of these beings. That's what he says. Now, part two never came out because I believe uh, either one thing, there is no part two, or if they have another video that they're holding on for some reason, um, like you said, maybe a documentary or something, I don't know. But as far as Angel's credibility, well, this, this one, yeah, okay. uh, with me, it, it's shot, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm calling this. Uh, I'm calling this right now a hoax.
That's what I'm calling it, okay? Uh, my opinion is nothing fell in that yard. Um, they didn't see any space beings or, or demons. What I believed, and I wasn't there, they saw something, a shadow, and because the way he talks, maybe they're adding stuff into it. But you got to remember, the father, that's what bothers me right now, because the father went on the phone to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department dispatcher and said he also saw the creatures. So I don't know what they saw in the yard, but Angel's credibility with me is shot. And the other thing that bothers me on this, folks, is, remember, I spoke to the neighbor, the next-door neighbor, and she said she heard a thud about the same time, and she was interviewed at some point later on by Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department police officers. So this thing is completely bizarre to me, um, but Angel's credibility with me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is, is down the tubes. Um, now he's saying there was no recording in the yard, didn't record, and uh, it may not be a UFO. It now may be a fallen angel. This is going to with me to uh, into the realm of, of BS. So that's uh, that's what I got uh, going on right now. I still have another aspect of this I'm looking at, and we still need to get answers from Metro. Uh, those cameras installed at the house uh, still bother me. I'm not buying the the answer that they put out. Um, that's still part of my investigation going on. And then the big thing is, did Metro Police go to the landlord's home and view video, whether they saw anything on it or not, and did a police detective tell Angel what Angel said the detective told him when he told me in that interview? Because I said in the last podcast, that doesn't jive. That circle was there. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that that circle was there before May 1st. So that part of his story, I said in the last podcast, doesn't doesn't, doesn't jive. But now he's saying the camera didn't record. So, and now the, it may not have been a UFO. It may have been a fallen angel. So that's what we got, ladies and gentlemen. Um, until the next one, I got a lot of stuff coming out for, uh, besides this, on the, the unsolved 2016 Land Kaufman murders. I got more stuff coming on on Sheriff Mayhill's uh, incident with Carrie Lance in 1995, where he, he told her to expose her vagina while the other officer forced her to eat crack cocaine. Um, the trial started this week on the, uh, the Antoine Perkins. That's the suspect in the uh, two child kidnapping and rapes that I exposed the cover-up on. And um, so that's going on this week. It's expected to go for two and a half weeks. And then we have, uh, um, I still have, a, what I, 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 two more cover-ups that, that I was apprised of uh, about two weeks ago. So I got all this stuff going on. And, um, and I'm going to get to the bottom of, of, of this thing. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm concerned, as far as Angel's concerned with me, uh, this thing is a hoax, okay? It bothers me why the father said he saw creatures, but do you hear the way Angel talks? Maybe they saw shadows or something, and then they, uh, they thought it was something else. But, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, no spacecraft, no fallen angels, no demons, no aliens— were in that yard of that residence on May 1st or any other time and go back and listen to Angel's interview with this UFO guy because he's talking about a lot of other stuff that's just uh, freaking bizarre. Like he sees, he said about a week or two ago, you go back and listen to it, he saw UFOs flying over the house and, and all this stuff. It's, uh, you know, this is, this is not what I do, ladies and gentlemen. I try to get facts and the facts right now to lead, lead me to believe that, uh, uh, there was no physical being in that yard. No physical craft came down. Uh, nothing disappeared. That's my opinion. If anybody thinks different, that's your opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will see you on the uh, the next podcast. You all have a, a good evening. Lawman sacrificed his badge for justice. Papa knew a secret that could free a man wrongfully imprisoned for shooting his ex-wife. But when Papa stepped forward, he was cut down by his own police department. All this stuff's going in my head. Should I call up to the defense attorney? Okay? And I knew if I did that, that, you know, holy hell would break loose. Deputy Sheriff Doug Papa used to be one of the top cops in rural Loudoun County, Virginia. Deputy Papa feels he's been busted himself. He lost his job as a narcotics investigator, he says, when he told an ugly truth about a four-year-old crime truth about how his own department and the local prosecutor allegedly ignored key evidence and may have sent an innocent man to jail. I testified 
and everything changes. What Deputy Papa testified about was an attempted murder in 1987. They deliberately withheld evidence that should have been given to my uh, defense attorneys. Bill Birch is the prosecutor Deputy Papa accused of ignoring the evidence. He says, he says, I told the prosecutor, I told Mr. Birch that this woman said, I'm going to shoot myself if need be, and, and I'm going to make it look like my husband did it just to ruin his life. Did he say that to you? No, he did not. But this November, the court believed Doug Papa. Oh my goodness, is this the reception committee? <laughs> and on Valentine's Day, William Carter was released on a $50,000 bond and given a new trial. This man usually puts people on trial in this courthouse, but in a rare turn of events, the Loudoun County Commonwealth Attorney was called to the witness stand. William Birch was asked to respond to allegations that he pressured a witness to lie in earlier court proceedings. Yes, sir. A woman who lived at the Carter Mansion the night Carol Vanderbilt Carter was shot five years ago testified that the prosecutor coached her to withhold testimony about the gun involved. I certainly did tell him about that it was a 38. I don't recall her saying anything about the gun, the 38 caliber, anything like that. He's lying to cover his tracks on the uh, on the last trial. And the high price one cop is paying for telling the truth. After serving more than four years behind bars, Carter was on the edge of his seat when the verdict was read today. We, the jury, on each joint, find the defendant William Douglas Carter not guilty. After he audibly thanked the jury, Douglas Carter could not contain himself. The tears flowed. I came out and testified in November of 1991 at the habeas corpus hearing, and again in January, I was suspended for 10 days without pay, and I was ended up being fired after 12 years in this department.